There are several prehistoric landmarks in the world, such as the Pyramids of Giza, the Gobekli Tepe, and the Temples of Malta that have captured the interest of many. However, no other landmark has been as puzzling as Stonehenge. Have you ever wondered how these 10-ton rocks were transported from hundreds of miles? A number of theories were made by people throughout the centuries, and it raised some pretty mind-boggling questions about the monument. Did our prehistoric ancestors move them? Did they ask help from aliens? Or did Merlin the wizard do it? Welcome to Intrigued Mind, and join us in tackling theories and uncovering the new mysteries behind the formation of the world-famous Stonehenge. This UNESCO World Heritage Site is not just a ring-like arrangement of rocks. It's one of the world's most famous prehistoric monuments that has perplexed historians, astronomers, and archaeologists for centuries due to its unknown ancient past. As mysterious as this monument is, it is the poster boy of the end of the Neolithic era, which was around 3000 BCE to 1900 BCE. This era was a pivotal moment in human history as it marked the end of the Stone Age and was the period nomads started settling down and laying their own laws. This monument is located in Wiltshire, England and roughly contains 100 rocks. The largest stone, also known as the Heel Stone, reaches up to 9 meters and weighs around 22 tons. For comparison, that's roughly the weight of a 10-wheeler truck. Just imagine, this monument has stood for over 5,000 years and lived through the Celts, the Romans, the Saxons, up until today's modern age. Truly, these rocks stood the test of time. These stones did not stand up overnight, though. According to archaeologists, it possibly took over 1,500 years to erect these giants. Surprisingly, it's made out of two types of stone, the larger outer circle being made out of larger sarsen stone, which is a type of sandstone, and the inner horseshoe shape made of smaller blue stone, which is a form of sediment stone. These stones were not carved though. In fact, these were natural stones moved from hundreds of miles away by humans who lived during the Neolithic era. You may be asking yourself the very same questions that everyone else is asking too. How did they move these giant stones? This was just at the end of the Stone Age, which was a period where the wheel wasn't even invented yet. In fact, the height of their technology were just chisels. So what could have moved massive rocks? Or another more mysterious question is, why move the rocks in the first place? This rock formation did serve a purpose for the Neolithic people, but it did take a while before archaeologists and historians were able to figure it out. To give you an estimate, it took more than 500 years for them to find out. In the early 17th to 18th century, scholars believed it was a Druid temple built by ancient Celtic pagans. By the way, Druids were ancient Brits who were high-ranking members of the Celtic society who acted as political or religious leaders. However, this theory was debunked recently by another theory we will discuss in a while. To this day, however, the monument still remains as a pilgrimage spot for modern-day Druidic societies. Another theory presented itself as being related to farming. Since a big portion of the Neolithic society was based on agriculture, historians believe it was used for that reason, a solar and lunar calendar. The 18th century scholars observed the monument and noticed it was aligned on a northeast-southwest axis, which is on the solstice and equinox points. According to astronomers, these points would face the midsummer solstice and the midwinter sunset, which are the longest and shortest days of the year. These days also serve as the turning point of the two seasonal episodes of the calendar, allowing the farmers to predict which crops to plant to gain the most harvest. It was a promising theory until modern technology and excavations were made at the site. Scholars finally agreed that it was a sacred burial ground and a monument to the dead since they uncovered bones in the site. In fact, Dr. Mike Pearson, the archaeologist who led the study, noted that it may be the largest cemetery of the 3rd millennium BCE. However, this was a burial site for not just anyone. It was for the rich and prominent families. But Dr. Pearson reiterated that it would be an oversimplification to just call it a burial site, given its layout and the fact that there was another interesting find a couple of miles upstream from the site of Stonehenge. Archaeologists found a wooden version of the Stonehenge in 2010. It measured around 25 meters wide and was also in use when Stonehenge was in its final form. Interestingly, the wooden version's access is similar to the access of Stonehenge. 
However, it does differ in how it is read. For example, in the wooden version, its axis would be aligned on the midsummer sunset and sunrise, while in Stonehenge, it would be aligned in midsummer sunrise and midwinter sunset. Dr. Pearson noted these were crucial points, since in the midsummer everything is sprouting and fertile, while during midwinter everything is dying. So the wooden version would be more associated as an area for the living, and the Stonehenge for the dead. One thing for sure is that there is more to be understood about Stonehenge and the area where it sits, as well as the rituals that took place there, and possibly what other symbolism could be uncovered that shows just how modern the Neolithic society was. After all, they were able to move around rocks that weigh the same as a 10-wheeler truck. But how did they even accomplish such a feat? Not even historians or archaeologists have the answer to this day. Remember, this was a period where the wheel wasn't even invented. Even if they had 1,500 years to do this project, how could they have possibly moved rocks weighing up to 10 to 20 tons each, hundreds of miles away from their original site? There is a vast range of theories that present how the megaliths could have been moved. The earliest explanation dates back to the 12th century, from Geoffrey of Monmouth, or you may famously know him as the author of King Arthur. His belief basically tells us that Stonehenge was the work of the wizard Merlin. In his writings, he said that Merlin was instructed to erect a memorial for a certain king's fallen subjects. So Merlin used his sorcery to lift these giant stones across the sea and arrange them. This concept was suspended due to modern science, of course, since Stonehenge is older than Merlin himself. A more advanced take on Jeffrey's theory would be that the stones were lifted by an extraterrestrial being, an alien. This theory was proposed by Eric von Daniken, also known as the father of ancient alien theory. Stonehenge was proposed to have been a landing pad for spacecrafts in the past. Another idea was that the Neolithic people had the help of aliens that allowed the stones to be laid out perfectly to be in line with the solstices. This theory was applied to other ancient monuments, such as the Pyramids of Giza. Conversely, moving away from otherworldly theories, some archaeologists, scientists, and even a construction worker came up with their own theories as to how these stones were moved. In 2003, a construction worker named Wally Wallington built a Stonehenge replica in his backyard and noticed that a man can transport a one-ton concrete block 300 feet per hour. So if there was a team involved in handling the stones, it could be a probable solution in erecting the stones. In 2010, however, another theory was proposed by engineer Gary Lavin where the builders could have used wicker baskets to carry the stones and put smaller stones under them to allow them to move the rocks. The baskets would then also be used as floats that could bring them downstream. In fact, this is an idea that is backed by archaeological evidence, since they found that people during this era were already weaving baskets. Another scheme that arose was that these people used timber rolls to transport the rocks, but they found that the stones were heavy enough to crush the wood. Though the question remains unanswered, and some theories may not be so plausible, others are backed up by historical data and could explain how these ancient societies accomplished such an incredible feat for their time. These theories are just a small step to uncovering the mysteries behind Stonehenge, because archaeologists continue to study not just the monument itself, but the area around it too. The question is, were they able to uncover any new findings that bring us closer to reconstructing its past? A team of archaeologists from the University of Bradford have made a recent discovery near Stonehenge that has brought new information about the Neolithic society and quite possibly rewrites history. Two miles away from Stonehenge lies the area of the Durrington Walls, which is a hedge where the Neolithic people were believed to have lived and feasted in. Vincent Gaffney, an archaeologist of the University of Bradford, told the New York Times that historians and archaeologists alike have always believed that Stonehenge was for the dead Durrington was for the living. But due to this recent finding, that idea has evolved. Vanessa Romo for NPR reported that archaeologists found 20 shafts at the Durrington site through remote sensing technology. Each pit was around 30 feet wide and 15 feet deep. At first, researchers thought the underground pits were natural sinkholes or ponds. However, when they pieced together the scans of the grounds and carbon dated the base of the pit, they found that the 20 pits formed a circle almost two kilometers in diameter, larger than any prehistoric monument in Britain, and was dated to around 2500 BCE, the same time Stonehenge was in use. This revealed that it was not just Stonehenge that was essential to the Neolithic people at the time, but the entire landscape itself. 
What was once thought to be a mere empty space of land was in fact a site where Neolithic society held practices in line with spirits and nature that we have yet to comprehend. This finding would not only change our understanding of Stonehenge, but also the history of the Neolithic era. Professor Gaffney noted that even if Stonehenge has been under study for so many centuries, they are still uncovering colossal mysteries about this prehistoric monument. With the new technology used in archaeology, who knows what else our historians could discover about Stonehenge and its continuously evolving story. If you have any theory about Stonehenge and its new discovery, share it with us in the comments below. For more videos on the most amazing forgotten parts of our history, be sure to subscribe to the Intrigued Mind channel, like the video, and leave your suggestions in the comments.